<laughs> okay, so today I have a really exciting topic for you, or at least I think it's exciting. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite cameras to travel with. And I have caught eight cameras to talk about with you. So settle in and let's go. A few housekeeping things. This is not gonna be like a technical discussion of the cameras. It's literally just gonna be like my thoughts on the camera, what I like. Also, uh, a little bit of background. Uh, why am I talking about travel cameras now? Well, I'm going traveling and I am going for like two months. Uh, so I wanted to share like sort of the cameras that I'm bringing. Um, and initially I was only gonna bring two cameras or three cameras really, but then I got some special film from someone uh, that I wanted to take on the trip and it's a different format. So then I had to bring like a different format <laughs> camera. And then I was like, well, if I'm bringing that, I might as well bring this format. So, <laughs> so then it just ended up going from two to three cameras to eight final cameras. Um, however, I am bringing a like a carry-on suitcase and this is where like all my clothes, personal items are gonna be and a few cameras. And then I am bringing a very slim black backpack um, that is more like an office bag. So it has room for like a computer, a notebook, um, like pens, accessories and stuff. So it's not a camera bag, but I've made it into like a semi camera bag. The whole setup is quite, portable because I love traveling super, 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 super light. And I will definitely forego clothes for cameras. <laughs> so that's what I've done here. I have brought as little clothing as possible. Uh, yeah, I've brought all these cameras, but the reason why I can fit eight is because they are so small. So yeah, let's get into it, let's go. If you would like to stay updated with, I'm gonna be doing some more travel videos of where we go. It won't necessarily be at the same time that I'm traveling there. Um, it'll probably be like afterwards, but um, yeah, if you like travel stuff and photography, then hit that subscribe button. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, let's get into the cameras. So I have a confession to make. I am gonna need to split these cameras into two camps because some of them are digital and some of them are film. I do need to bring digital cameras for specific reasons uh, and I will get into those. So I'm going to talk about the digital cameras first and get those out of the way and then we'll save the best for last and talk about the film cameras. So without further ado. So camera number one, dun 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 dun. What is it, what is it? It's the Sony RX104. <laughs> sorry. It was probably like, I've had too many cups of coffee today. So you're probably like, I'm sorry if you're just waking up and watching this. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, so I am bringing the Sony RX104, um, which I got on mbp.com for like maybe 200, pounds, 100, 200 pounds, and it wasn't in the best of shape. You can see the back is a bit like, the LCD screen is like kind of messed up, but um, I mean, it still works and the lens is gorgeous. And will you turn on? Do I have batteries in you? <gasps> I don't, oh no. So this, the Sony RX series is an amazing travel camera digital series. Um, it's something like a one inch sensor, I think. Um, but I'm not exactly sure on the size, uh, but it's, I mean, it, all you need to know is that it's, yeah, it's really good. The sensor is really good. Autofocus is fast, like all that stuff. It's just a really good camera. Um, it goes down to like 1.8 or 1.4, no, it goes down to 1.8. Um, so plenty of room to shoot at night. And it has a flip screen. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you see yourself in that? There you are on the X-H1. Um, yeah, so it has a flip screen, so it's really good. The only drawback, um, oh, it's also got a viewfinder. Oh, how cool is that? And that actually like, you can pull that out and look through the look through the camera. Um, so that's really cool. So you can kind of use it like a camera with a viewfinder. Um, it's got a flash that pops up, which is great. Um, so it's kind of like an all-in-one, except 
um, it takes 4K video, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, so the only thing about this camera is that it doesn't have a mic port, which is quite sad because then this would be like the only camera I would use. I wouldn't use the X-H1 probably because <laughs> uh, this can record in 4K. One, th the reason why I'm bringing this is I'm taking a street photography workshop and I don't want to shoot film on the workshop because in order to get like I want to be able to review the images that I took during the workshop while I'm there instead of taking film and not like n not really getting that instant feedback for the learning uh, purposes. Um, oh, and I will take, I have this strap where it like has these clips on here, um, which you can just easily take off and use the strap. Oh yeah, so this is my strap system. Okay, so quick camera intermission talk about the strap system. Um, so I have those attachments on a bunch of different cameras. So if I wanted to switch camera, all I need to do is plug these into the other camera's same straps. So I only need to bring one strap, which is great. <laughs> the second digital camera that I am bringing is the GoPro! Uh, so this is the GoPro Hero Black 7, uh, which I actually got for free because I racked up like way, like ages ago, years ago in the States. I don't have credit cards anymore, but when I did, I racked up so many points at a store called REI, which is an outdoors camping store. But so yeah, so I used all my points to get this. Uh, and I think they're up to version, they're up to like 10 or 11 or whatever, GoPro now, but like the 7 I think was the first version that had really, 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 really smooth stabilization. And you can also, there's a wide lens that is normal, like typically known, you know, GoPro for, but then this camera has a, it's called a linear lens. So it's actually more, it's like less wide. So it looks more like a normal field of view. Uh, and it's amazing and I love it and you can just put it on top of a camera or I've got an attachment where I can put it on my backpack strap here uh, and film while I'm walking um, and it's tiny like and I've got this cute little uh, mega gear case for it um, with like a carabiner so I can clip it on like different places uh, so it is it is amazing um, and it's absolutely tiny so it's nothing to add to bring on The third digital camera is dun, 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 my phone. <laughs> um, I film a lot of video on my phone. I don't take too many pictures, but it's a really good option because any smartphone that's relatively modern these days. I mean, this isn't this is a Samsung like A52, and I think I got it for like 200 pounds, like all in. That's all you pay. You don't pay any more. I just bought the phone. I've got a pay-as-you-go plan, uh, so it's it's really amazing, and it has a steady cam, so you can take really really stabilized videos. It's really cool. It has a great mic, um, so yeah. And I've got <laughs> got my sticker from Analog Wonderland there, the heart in the film. I love that. So so yeah. Oh yeah, you can see all the different cameras on there. So it's got a macro camera. It's got like a zoom camera, it's got a, the normal camera, the stabilization, it's it's like, it is amazing value for what you pay for the phone. It's incredible. So yeah, this is, the, I, I count this as camera. <laughs> okay. And then, very excitingly, uh, I have the last digital camera is, Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> so this is the Panasonic um, Lumix FS20. And this is technically like what people are calling like a digicam these days. It's 10 megapixels. It is tiny. Look how thin that is. So like the GoPro, it's really nothing to put it in my bag. And it is the partnership with Leica where Panasonic, Panasonic Lumix, they have a partnership with Leica where they put sort of like a Leica lens in these cameras. So this is a Leica Vario Elmar 
3.3 or f 3.3 to 5.8 um a spherical it has a super wide 30 millimeter lens i mean it's it's just the bomb and it's i love the menu system so i'll show you um so like how old school is that it's so simple and it takes really good images so i'm really excited to use this That is it for digital cameras and now on to the very exciting part and probably why you're here and what you want to see is the film cameras so let's go initially i was only going to bring one 35 millimeter camera and it's turned into one 35 millimeter camera one 35 millimeter half frame camera one medium format camera and one 110 camera. <laughs> I have a problem, okay? I'm so <laughs> sorry. I will save the medium format camera until the last because it hasn't made an appearance on this channel in quite a while because it's been on loan with uh, a friend. We swapped cameras. Uh, so I finally have it back just in time for this trip. I am so excited. So I will tell you what that is at the end. So, so watch until the end. <laughs> Okay, so the next camera, um, this is a film camera and it is absolutely tiny. So this is the Premiere Mini 110 camera and it's literally like, like, yeah, less than my palm. Like it can fit in my palm, which is amazing. And it is a focus free camera. You just literally put the 110 cartridge in the back close it up you're ready to shoot well wind on a bit first um, open this and you're ready to go and it is so small it's amazing I mean the cartridges I've brought two cartridges for the moment and I'm hoping to pick up more but two is enough for this it is so small it's like packing an extra bar of soap <laughs> so so it is awesome and I've shot Lamography Orca black and white on this and it came out awesome, I just love it. Um, and I have packed some Lomography Tiger film and purple film. So I am i can't wait to shoot that. Um, so yeah, so this, I mean, and it comes with this super cute case. Love it. The next cameras, I will go through the 35 millimeter cameras. Okay, so you may, if you saw my last video on Kentmere or one of my last videos on Kentmere, you will know that I saved, I traded, I invested in this camera. This was made by Minolta in Japan and it, like I just put their name on it. Um, so it's really a Minolta technically. It's got a Minolta lens. It's got the Minolta Rokor 40 millimeter F2 lens. And what I've done, I'm really excited. So this is a, a 40.5 millimeter filter thread. And I have a filter that goes on there, but I've also got an adapter because I used to have all these really cool filters for the Nikon F3, like a red 72 filter, which is really cool for infrared black and white photography. I've got a star filter, which if you follow Kate Hook on TikTok, she always posts photos that she's taking with star filters in the sun with her friends wearing glittery dresses and it's amazing. <laughs> I love it. It's just so cool. Um, I've taken photos at night with that star filter and it comes out really, really, really cool. So I'm really excited to use that. So I've got an adapter that will let me use those filters on this. Um, 
So, uh, the reason why I brought this one is because it is the smallest rangefinder that I have. I absolutely love rangefinders. Um, and it also has a really, like, it has a very well working light meter. Uh, it's very reliable. I'm really excited to use those filters with it. The I brought the Red 72, which is more for like infrared black and white, because I've brought some black and white film. Uh, I've brought the star filter, and I've brought, there's one more. Oh, I've brought the Promis filter. So I, I'm not using it right now, but I used to, rec I've recorded some videos with the Promis one quarter filter, which is really hyped up right now on YouTube and videos because it gives like your video just like a more soft cinematic look and people love it um, so I got one to try it and see how it looks and it's awesome I'd, I'm not sure what I prefer yet though but I am gonna put it on here and take some photos and see what it looks like like with still photography okay, so I'm excited um, I know I've seen if you watch uh, Vulandis's, Vulandis channel uh, he uses the Promist filter a lot in some of his videos and his images are freaking amazing so I'm excited to see what that might look like and play around with it I'm just really excited to like this just play around and have fun The next 35 millimeter camera, but it's not a normal 35 millimeter camera because it is a half frame camera, and it is dun 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 the Fujika half. I got this for 39 pounds. I have a new rule, and it's actually Lucy has a really good video. Lucy Lumen has a really good video about saving money in film photography, and one thing she says is have a rule where it's like one camera in, one camera out. I think I probably will take that a step further for me and say. Whatever money you spend, you have to sell however many cameras makes up for that. So, because I, if I bought, if I bought like, obviously I bought this, I only had to sell like one other camera, but for the Leica CL, I had to sell like a few. So, <laughs> um, but that's okay, it was worth it. <laughs> So I should call it the Minolta because it is really a Minolta. I'm getting so sidetracked. So the Fujika Half, um, this, is a, this is an amazing camera. I had had trouble finding good, half, good working half frame cameras on eBay. So then when I saw this on West Yorkshire cameras, I immediately jumped on it and, and bought it. Um, and it's working. The light meter is working. It has these cells here. So this is the light meter. So it doesn't need a battery. It's just got these cells. And the amazing thing about this camera is that you can put it in fully automatic mode, which is incredible to me um, because this camera is ancient. Um, but you can also put it in manual mode. So it has manual aperture and manual shutter speed. Um, but then you can put it in complete auto mode and the only thing you have to worry about is the focus. So it does have like a scale focus here. Let's see if you can get close up. this is probably the perfect camera for me it's amazing no batteries manual and auto modes i love these um this style of winder this is my favorite style it's why i have the canon 7 uh the canon l3 i just oh god i love that that it's like all metal i just love it um super quiet shutter so it's really good for shoot photography uh, the only, only, only thing about this camera is that it, the light meter, it only goes up to ISO 200 or ASA 200. If you use films above that, you will have to compensate for that. So you can either shoot it manually without the light meter or you can tell the lab that you've shot it 
at ISO 200. I shot a roll of HP5 through this and it came out freaking cool. I mean, it, it was super grainy, but I did process it in Rodinol, old Rodinol, so <laughs> that might be why, but it is amazing. It has um, an easy clasp there. So it's a manual load and wind, but it's it's has these um, metal clips here that make it super easy to load. It's got the shutter counter in the bottom, which I love. Uh, yeah, so, and it, you know, it can go on the tripod. Okay, so yeah, so you'll see I've got these clips here um, so that when I take the strap off my other cameras, I can put it on this. But you can get 72 images um, on a 36 roll or 48 on a 24 roll. I think I, that math is right. <laughs> Don't ask the accountants to do math. <laughs> Okay, so last but certainly not least, this is the first medium format camera that I got. This is one of my favorite cameras ever. Uh, this is the camera that Mike tried to use and we did that really, really funny video. Uh, I mean, we had a lot of fun and I know some people enjoyed it um, and it, it was a bit silly, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and actually, if you like that sort of video, uh, when I'm home, because I'm going home for a bit, um, my sister wants to do one of those videos, so you might see another um, family member <laughs> video, <laughs> beginner versus camera video. <laughs> uh, okay, so stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss that video. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring a medium format camera, but then I got some film from someone to try, and I really wanted to shoot it on the trip um, to these different places that I'm going. Um, and I, I will reveal what and why that makes sense in a later video. <laughs> I'm doing a little teaser there. The film was medium format, so I had to bring a medium format camera. And my choice is currently um, because I sold the Yashica Mat 124G or the Yashica Mat 124G. I sold that because it's too big, it's too bulky, and I used it in Greece, and I think. It was a good last hurrah for that camera, um, but I just kind of fell out of love, out of love with it. So I sold it. Don't have that anymore. Uh, what I do have is the Fuji or the Fujika GS645W, which is an amazing camera, um, but it is quite big. It's not that big, but it's quite big compared to. The Zeiss Icon Netter. <laughs> I feel like I say that the same in every video. I have done a bunch of videos on this camera. If you go back to like my early, early videos, I've done so many on this camera doing, um, it was like part of like a cheap black and white series in the winter that I did um, because I got this camera off eBay for 30 pounds. So this is how slim it is. And it comes in this beautiful case, which I absolutely love. It's got its own strap. Um, so what I do to shoot it is you just easily pop it out like this. And there it is. How gorgeous is that? But that's, you, that's not the whole camera, of course. Um, you have to extend the lens because it is a folding camera. And it has bellows. So this is a F6.3. 75 millimeter lens uh, so it's it's not the widest it's it's sort of like middle of the road lens um, f6.3 is quite high of an f-stop but because this camera is a scale focus camera so it's all manual focus and there's like a sliding scale that you have to guess the focus um, so it gives you like uh, it's in feet so you can go from you can focus from four feet away to infinity uh, and there's markings for like six feet nine feet 12 feet 18 feet 30 feet so you kind of have to guess the focus and it's really hard to guess the focus up close uh, unless you're really good with spatial distancing um, which i am 
sometimes good with and sometimes not so good with. Um, I've been surprised when I've taken like a portrait of Mike that came out sharp, um, so I got that right, but then I've taken other ones where I misjudged the focus and it was all blurry. So, what I usually do with this camera is shoot it at infinity and I will shoot scenes that I want everything in focus and like sometimes far away subjects. So I will just keep it at infinity and just shoot certain things with it. So it's like cities, buildings, landscapes. Um, I have used this for street photography. Actually, I have a video where I shot XP2 in this in Cardiff around Christmas. And I did some street shots um, that actually came out in focus. Um, so you can do it, but it just takes a bit more time to like judge things. Um, but yeah, the reason why this I love this for traveling is because it is so slim and small and portable. And you really only get this like bulk when you extend the lens, so when you're actually shooting. Um, but otherwise, when it's you're not shooting with it, it is so compact for a medium format camera. And there are so many cameras like this out there on eBay, on the market. Um, I mean, there's... This is a 6.3 Zeiss Icon Netter. There's many different versions of this. There's a 4.5 F version, um, or F 4.5 version. Uh, there's like the Zeiss, there's like an Iconta one, which is supposed to be amazing, gorgeous. Um, there's an Kodak or Agfa or something, Adox version of this camera. There's just so many folding cameras out there. Um, the one thing you have to be careful of is the bellows. So like I got really lucky with this camera because the um, bellows there were in really good shape. No light leaks whatsoever. Um, everything in this camera was in really good shape. I mean I bought it like it said like not working. Um, so I just kind of bought it as a risk which paid off. Um, but that doesn't always pay off for me on eBay. So um, you do have to sort of like do like do research and just be careful and really like assess the photos and you can ask questions and stuff um, so yeah so that's the only thing to watch out for if the bellows are a bit worn but you can replace them so uh, it's not a lost cause <laughs> if they do have light leaks uh, yeah so that is the medium format camera that I'm bringing and that brings us to the end of the video because that is all the cameras that is all eight cameras <laughs> Uh, I can show you the backpack though that I'm bringing. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I'll sh I'll just show you now. So just stay there. You can see more of my messy room. <laughs> so this is the backpack that I'm bringing. Let me just scoot you forward a bit. Hopefully you can see the. Hopefully you can see the backpack because this is quite a wide lens. Um, maybe if I back up a bit. So this is. So this is the backpack that I'm bringing. Um, I got it off Amazon like years ago, just looking for a backpack for work because all I needed was something to like commute with on the train, just that can fit my laptop and a few things. Um, so it's super slim. Look at that, super slim. Um, and I've got my little camera and coffee pin there. Um, so yeah, so what it does have though that I love, because I was gonna bring a bigger camera backpack. Um, but what I, so what I love about this camera is that it's got this, it's got this um, strap in the back that goes on my suitcase and it's got this secret pocket there, which I mean, I don't really use it, but I could put like money and stuff in there um, because that's not accessible from the, the front. Like when I'm wearing it, I probably will put some cash in here. Um, so yeah, but it has this, which goes on my suitcase, which makes traveling a breeze. So you don't have to actually carry anything on your back. How I've turned it into a camera bag is, I have taken one of my other camera bags. I've taken one of the inserts from one of my other camera bags and I have stuffed it in the bottom of this backpack. Um, so this is where like the most sort of valuable cameras to me, I guess, will go. So like the Leica Ciel will go in here. And that's the other thing about why these cameras are also my favorite cameras for traveling is because pretty much if I lose or if any of these cam if I lose any of these cameras or if any of these cameras get stolen not that I can easily replace them but the 
I guess the monetary investment is not that high. They're all quite relatively inexpensive cameras, except for the Leica CL. So the Leica CL, that is the one that I will be, like, that I will have on me at all times. Like, <laughs> I will take it everywhere with me. It won't leave my sight. So that's really the only camera that I will have, like, half an eye on at all times. Um, but so that is the other benefit of like when, when you're traveling, when I'm traveling, I always think about like, well, if I lost this, if I, if someone stole it, like, would that be stomachable? Um, and if not, I might consider leaving it at home. Um, I'm not leaving the like a CL at home just because I want, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> So yeah, so I just take the camera insert from my other camera bag and I put it in here in the bottom and it fits perfectly. It has a, this is almost over, I promise. Uh, so it has a front pocket here where I can put some cables, extra bits, tissues, whatever. Um, and then it's got a side, extra side pocket there where you can like slide in some things. So that is the bag. <laughs> Cause everyone wants to know what bag, what bag, what bag are you bringing? This. This is what I'm bringing. And this will fit most of the very important cameras. And then the rest of them will go in my overhead carry-on very securely and safely packaged with love. The only other thing uh, about packing is I'm gonna bring uh, like an iPad and an e-reader. I'm not bringing my laptop because it is too heavy. So what I've done is I am bringing my iPad and I'm bringing like a detachable keyboard and mouse. Uh, which are super small, and those are in the overhead uh, cabin bag. Um, so that's sort of the system that I've worked out that suits me best because I edit all my videos on the iPad and I've got attachments where I can plug in like SD cards or I can like upload from my phone and then download on the iPad, like different videos I take on my phone. Yeah, that's the system. The only other thing I'm bringing that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's because I'm using it right now, is my Rode. It's a Rode Go shotgun mic. It's not the super big one. It's like quite small. Okay, so super quick, because my camera battery just died and I don't have any more that are charged. <laughs> um, I just wanted to finish. So this, I am bringing this mic. It is the Rode uh, Go mic. It is wired, um, but I have an attachment that I can plug this into my phone and use it with my phone. Uh, right now I'm using my phone's native audio, which actually isn't too bad, uh, but I will be bringing this, uh, which is super small, super portable, uh, in case I wanna do any high quality audio recordings with my phone. Um, I also forgot to mention what tripod I'm bringing. That's this. So this is a, it's really kind of like a selfie stick. <laughs> Um, but I feel a bit cringe saying that it's a selfie stick. So this actually is a tripod and it has an attachment there and I've got an attachment for the GoPro and my phone. Um, but the reason why I love this thing is because it has a, another cold shoe here. So I can put my mic there when I want to record it on my phone. Um, and it's hard to do this like one-handed, but you see it like pops out like that. And then the bottom actually like opens up into a tripod so god this video is going to be awful <laughs> so it opens up into a tripod it's not like a gorilla pod that you could like wrap around different things um but it is it just has everything that i need and it's super small and lightweight and can fit in like a backpack or a purse uh yeah so that's that's really it that is like my packing uh video <laughs> So now it's your turn. Let me know what cameras you prefer best for travel. What is your favorite camera to take with you traveling? And if you have any thoughts on the cameras that I showed you today, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Um, I will see you there after this. So yeah, take care and I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye!